Today, we're throwing together a flavorful beef and onion stir-fry. This is a classic dish all around the world, and I'll share my way of making the entire dish. Everything you need to know about tenderizing and velveting the meat, to how to make the savory sauce. We have some work in front of us, so let's get started. For the recipe today, I've picked sirloin steak, but you can also use chuck roast, chuck steak, flank steak, and many other cuts of meat. The velveting technique will tenderize any type of beef, so use what you have at home. Take a close look at the grain of the meat. We should cut the beef against the grain, and this means slicing it perpendicular to the grain. The thickness of the slices are also important. Aim for the thickness about a quarter of an inch, that's half a centimeter for my European viewers. If you struggle to cut the meat into thin pieces, try freezing the meat for 30 minutes before you cut it. It will make the beef firmer and easier to handle. So why do we do this? We make the slices as thin as possible to make the fiber in the meat as short as possible, which in turn makes it a lot easier to eat. With the meat cut into thin slices, let's start with the first out of two marinations. A thing that many people do, that I've seen in cooking videos for a while, is that they use baking soda in their marinade. While this is not wrong in any way, I believe it leaves a metallic aftertaste on the food. I get the same feeling when you're chewing on tin foil. Instead, I do this. In the bowl with your meat, put half a teaspoon of baking soda, then take a tablespoon of water and pour that over the meat. Mix it evenly until all the baking soda has been dissolved by the water and the mixture is coating all of the meat. The liquid will be pulled into the meat and when you're certain everything is mixed well, you can put some cling film over the top and let it marinate for 20 to 30 minutes. If you want to marinate more meat than I do here, just keep in mind that you want roughly 9 to 10 ounces for this amount of baking soda and water. When the beef has marinated for 20 to 30 minutes, it's time to rinse off the baking soda and water mixture. Use cold water and give it a good rinse. When you're happy with the rinsing, Diligently dry the meat on kitchen paper and make sure it's dry before moving on to the next step. You can pound and squeeze the beef to extract some extra moisture. This tenderizing technique can be used for many different types of recipes. If you have the time, this is a way to make sure that even the toughest pieces of meat is tender after cooking. Let's move on to part 2 of the marination process. Start by adding a quarter teaspoon of salt, a quarter teaspoon of sugar, and one eighth of a teaspoon of white pepper. You can substitute white pepper for black pepper if you want to. Mix it well and make sure that every part of the beef is covered with the spices. You can now go ahead and add one tablespoon of water and continue mixing the beef. When the water has been drawn into the meat, you can go ahead and add another tablespoon of water. Adding the water is an important step if you want juicy beef once we cook the meat. When the water has once again been drawn into the meat, you can add one egg white to the mix and continue mixing. The egg will help the cornstarch to stick to the meat, which will act like a barrier during the cooking process making sure the liquid we've added will not escape the meat. While we're talking about cornstarch, add a tablespoon of it to the meat and continue mixing. Lastly, we're going to add oil to the mixture, which will separate the pieces of meat during the cooking stage. Set the meat aside for another 20 minutes, and this is also a great opportunity to start our rice. Probably the best investment I ever made was to buy a rice cooker. Well, technically, I got one gifted for my birthday a few years back. Measure the amount of rice you want, and add it to the rice cooker bowl. Make sure to rinse the rice at least 4 times, or until the water is running very clear. Now 
Then you measure the water to the mark, and since I use long grain rice, I go for the long grain marking. Don't forget to add salt. I always forget to add salt for some reason. My reminder for you and for myself is to add salt. Then you can go ahead and start your rice cooker. Let's move on to the vegetables, so everything is ready for the stir fry once we begin cooking. Peel and slice half an onion into vertical strips. Then we want to make sure to separate each segment of the onion. Then we can set them aside for later. Now we're going to peel and slice or mince two large garlic cloves. I prefer them thinly sliced, but you might not. Either way, the shape is not important. Then you can set the garlic aside for later. Up next is the spring onion. Cut the root off and separate the green and the white part of the spring onion. The green part will be used as garnish at the end, while we're going to cook the white part. Slice the green part into smaller circle shaped pieces. The white part is sliced into half and then cut into smaller pieces. We've now reached the stage of velveting the beef. The velveting process is not very hard and is done quickly. We need enough oil to cover the bottom of our wok to shallow fry the beef. You can put a piece of bread in the oil to tell if it's hot or you can use a chopstick. If you see bubbles, you're ready to begin. Don't overcrowd the wok. It's better to do it in two batches instead. Be careful. The oil is hot and you don't want oil splatter on your skin. Let the beef sit for a while in the oil before you stir since we don't want to cool down the oil too much. The beef will quickly get some color and it doesn't take long before you can remove both the beef and the oil from the heat. Then you can strain the meat from the oil and set it aside for later. We're now gonna make the sauce as the last step before finishing the stir fry. You help my channel a lot by clicking the subscribe button. And as a thank you, I'll place all the ingredients in a list at the end of the video so you can easily take a screenshot of your next shopping list. The sauce consists of one tablespoon of Shaoxing cooking wine. If you can't find this ingredient, you can substitute it with another type of rice wine. Then you're gonna go ahead and add three tablespoons of oyster sauce, one teaspoon of dark soy sauce, one tablespoon of soy sauce, half a teaspoon of sugar, one teaspoon of cornstarch, half a teaspoon of grated ginger, and three tablespoons of water. Mix all the ingredients with a whisk and make sure there are no clumps in the sauce. Make sure you've prepared all the ingredients before you start cooking. Otherwise, if you're not ready, you might burn your stir-fry while preparing the missing ingredients. Turn on the stove to a medium setting and add some of the oil you strained from the beef earlier. First, add the garlic and let it go for a few moments before you add the onion. Turn the stove to a high setting and add the beef when the pan is hot. Then you add the sauce we prepared earlier. When you've added the sauce, make sure that you continuously stir to avoid burning. When everything is well mixed and incorporated, you're done. Take the stir fry off the heat and prepare a bowl. Add rice to the bottom of a bowl and then you add the beef and onion stir-fry on top. Garnish with some of the green part of the spring onion and also some sesame seeds. This recipe is delicious and generally easy. If you follow these steps, I can promise that you will have a great lunch or dinner. If you enjoyed this recipe, I know you will enjoy my chicken cashew recipe. 
I'll link it here on screen for you. As promised, the list of ingredients is coming right up and I really hope you try this recipe.